Dave Gardy here live on the floor of Workbo 2009 at the Memorial Convention Center in New Orleans. And with me is Mr. Bob Tattnall, who's president of a company called FuelRide. Bob, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for coming by. You've got a in very interesting company, a uh, great reputation for doing something that a lot of people need. Let's just talk a little bit about sludge removal. Well, tell us a little bit about the history of the company and what, and what the company does. Sure. Well, uh, the company started in the mid-90s. Uh, I started it uh, about the time I retired from DuPont as an engineer, and I was familiar with sludge. I'd had sludge problems in a diesel automobile. I'd had sludge problems in a home heating oil system. And I was aware of friends who had sludge problems in their boats. So it all added up. I understood sludge and um, found out that much of the rest of the world did not understand sludge. They blamed it on the fuel oil, did not realize that, in fact, it's a contamination issue. It's a biological issue. And because of my work with biological fouling in water systems with DuPont, I was able to come up with a different approach to dealing with sludge. And uh, so we developed the original fuel right using other people's chemistry. And um, I've capitalized on friends in the business, uh, chemists worldwide, and buy ingredients worldwide and make what's a very unique type of product, not unlike any other additive. It is. And one of the things people are looking at at the show is this demonstration you've got back here, which uh, clearly shows what your product does. Can you give us an overview of what this is telling us? Well, we have a test, Dave, that I uh, developed and gave at Brookhaven National Lab in 1996, where I grew sludge in little jars with uh, diesel fuel and water present, worst possible conditions, but real conditions from the real world, a little bit of contamination, and then nature taking its course. And we, uh, so all my tests were based on growing sludge in a clean system, and we showed that our chemistry could prevent that. Uh, people rightly came up and said, well, wait a minute, all of our systems are badly fouled. All of our customers already have problems. What can you do for sludge that's already there? So I took jars that originally had the water layer, the sludge, as you see it in some of these, and diesel fuel. And we ran our little jar test format, uh, changing the fuel once a month treating the jars with various additives that we've listed. And I don't mean, these were actually chosen because they showed some promise from our other testing, not, not because we thought they would be uniquely bad. And these have been treated now for well over 100 times with the respective chemicals. The fuel's been changed once a week since 1998. And uh, nature has taken its course. And you can see this is the untreated jar. You can see that it makes a difference. All of these products claim to control sludge, um, and this tells you which ones really do. You'll notice the water is still there. Right. Uh, the water layer hasn't gone away. Additives, right unfortunately, the yeah, yes, hard. in the bottom. And this is uh, ultra-low sulfur on-road diesel fuel. And um, I wish you could see it. There are some bright steel nails sitting in the bottom of this water that okay. have been sitting there all these years. No rusting, yeah, no change. And it really well demonstrates that we can make sludge actually go away and corrosion not occur. There's no bad news here. Well, it's a great demonstration, and I know a lot of people have been looking at it. Now, another big issue in the industry is lubricity. Can you give us an idea of why that's so important? Absolutely, Dave. Come uh, over here to this chart problem. Sure. Um, lubricity was brought up first when the refiners were told they had to remove sulfur from high sulfur heating oil and diesel fuel back in the uh, late 80s. And they started doing it in the 90s and we got the low sulfur, 500 parts sulfur. And they, the refiners, because they don't like to do things, they don't like to be told what to do, uh, resisted. And one of the reasons they gave for not making this change was they said, oh, you're gonna strip all the lubricity out of the fuel oil. And you're gonna tear up all your diesel engines and you don't want that to happen. Well, it turned out in that time, it was a red herring. At 500 parts per million, it did not have poor lubricity. But the same thing happened again in the early 2000s with ultra-low sulfur. We now want to go down from 500 to 15 parts. Well, it's not, people think it's the sulfur that adds lubrication. No, the sulfur in fuel oil does not add lubrication. It's, it's organosulfur compounds, mercaptans, things that it's just tied up with the hydrocarbon. It's not doing anything useful for the fuel. Um, in fact, when they remove the sulfur from the fuel, they also incidentally strip a lot of the aromatics out of the fuel 
and it's those aromatics that we're giving lubricity. Okay. So there's the common disconnect that people have. But the bottom line is that if you look at the standard ASTM method that, that is used in the United States and most of the Western uh, world, uh, we use what we call a high frequency reciprocating rig test and you look at a wear scar diameter, big is bad, the smaller the number the better. And um, in the old days with high sulfur fuels, it would typically run in the mid 300s. With ultra low sulfur diesel, we're up 550 to 600 range and this is serious wear and, uh, and it shows in that pattern. Uh, when we w went to some of the railroads who looked very seriously at this, it's older diesel engines that are most susceptible because they aren't designed, they don't have the metallurgy and the wear resistant materials built in to handle this poor lubricity. So um, uh, the railroads mostly run with older diesel engines, very similar to a lot of work boats I might add. And um, uh, this is an additive that they were using, a big a well known name and it was not giving them the level they wanted. We found out that Fuelrite, with just a tiny amount of a lubricity additive put into it, could easily meet the Cummins recommendation, which has become almost an international standard now. The 480 number is the, the requirement that people are seeing. Uh, so we make now a product that easily meets that standard, and if somebody wants to spend the money, we will make a product called Fuelrite Lube Plus that will bring them back to the levels they had with high sulfur fuel. The engine manufacturers say you don't need it. We don't know if you want it. We'll, we'll make it if people want to pay for it. Interesting. Now, you talk about some of the clients. You've got some pretty big customers. Can you name a few and just the kind of markets that you're serving now? Oh, absolutely. Well, we, we started in the heating oil side because uh, I was closer to that side initially, had contacts there already. And we had people like Irving Oil use our product. We have. Uh, uh, very big companies uh, throughout the northeastern United States using our product. But within the past two years, we've gotten involved more with the marine side. And most of our activity has been with tugboat companies. Uh, they are the companies that, that seem to have the biggest stake in downtime and um, reliable operation. And we've been working with companies like Moran, McAllister, uh, Reinhauer, um, and um, Crescent towing the biggest names in the business, uh, the very best companies, technically. And excellent. And even though for smaller applications, too, you've got something here called a water magnet. Well, who buys that and what's that used for? Well, as I explained earlier, Dave, um, our additive does not remove water. It makes the water not a problem, but the water's still there. Water is a fact of life in fuel systems, and it isn't going to go away anytime soon. So how do you get rid of water if you want to get rid of water? Um, and this product, uh, called a water magnet, is, um, will absorb water, will not absorb fuel. So this flat object can be dropped into the tank. There's a string attached. You tie it off, and you just let it sit in the bottom of the tank for a little while. It'll suck up water. Uh, we have one that, for larger tanks that will uh, collect a half a gallon of water. It's about 24 inches long. And um, then you just pull it out and just throw it away. There's no fuel in there, so it's not hazardous waste. It's just a, a wet uh, uh, sausage at that point. Excellent. Well, congratulations on the success with the company, Bob. Well, and you. if people want to find out more about it, where would they go for more, find more about Fuelrite? Well, the best place to go is fuelrite.com. Uh, that will give you all the contact information. We, uh, our sales office is in Washington, D.C. Our home office is in Wilmington, Delaware, and our numbers are posted on the Internet. Thank you, Bob Tattenall, president of Fuelrite. Thank you for joining us today here live from the floor of Workboat 2009 at the Morale Convention Center. I'm Dave Gardy. Stay tuned for more from Maritime TV.